All right, guys, let's talk about our guts. You see, sometimes you'll see, uh, particularly like on TikTok or social media, where some woman with a big old bloated belly telling you embrace the bloat. Bloating is normal. Bloating is fine. Uh, there's, there's no problem with that. I say BS to that stuff. We're not supposed to be all bloated. You're not supposed to be farting and burping, and you're certainly not supposed to be having blood coming out your butt. Those are signs of serious illnesses. And let's, let's talk about how a diet, particularly a meat-based diet, has been able to and can help fix many of these common gut symptoms. And so the first one is IBS or irritable bowel syndrome. I think it should be renamed you're eating your own damn food, quite honestly. I mean, that's it's, it, it accounts for up to 50% of all visits to the gastroenterologist in the United States. It is so incredibly common. Some of the symptoms include constipation, gas, bloating, cramping, indigestion, heartburn, nausea, vomiting, exhaustion, sweating. Uh, this is an extremely common diagnosis, something like 15% of Americans are diagnosed with this, maybe some as high as 20, and probably other people have it that have been have not yet been diagnosed with. Again, IBS for lack of a better term is you're eating the wrong damn food. We should just rename it that, call it what it is. And, and that's really what it is. And we have all these sort of different protocols and treatments and medications and put you on antidepressant meds and things like that. It's because no one is looking at the food. There's still Today, in 2023, there are gastroenterologists and, and quite a few of them that say all this stuff, all these digestive diseases have nothing to do with what we eat. I can think of very few statements in medicine that are more idiotic than that, and yet we still see that propagated even today. So ulcerative colitis, this is the first of two inflammatory diseases, inflammatory uh, bowel diseases that I'll talk to, a so-called IBD. Uh, ulcerative colitis pretty much is what it is. You get ulcers in your colon and in your rectum and the entire area. And so it can be uh, very, very painful and it can cause, you know, bloody diarrhea. And people have many, many uh, bowel movements, sometimes up to 20 times a day they're running to the toilet. It can be a very, very awful, awful existence. Again, pain, diarrhea, bloody stools. Often, you know, people with this, because of their frequent diarrhea and their loss of nutrition, they often become malnourished. Uh, they can have anemia, osteoporosis. If they're kids, they can have inhibited growth, delayed puberty, and it can lead to dramatically increased rates of colorectal cancer, GERD gastroesophageal reflux disease. This is another one where, you know, people, it's its extremely common. You know, you see people popping in acids or taking proton pump inhibitors in an effort to blunt down the acid. That's not the appropriate treatment for this. Our stomachs are supposed to make acid. We, are, we have some of the most acidic stomach environments of, in the entire animal kingdom. You know, our gastric pH typically is about 1.5 at rest. You know, this is this compares to carrion feeders like coyotes and vultures and things like that. And the reason for that is humans likely evolved in a situation where we're exposed to a lot of meat that's been setting out. And so to protect ourselves from that, we developed this very energetically expensive process to produce an extremely acidic gastric pH. And so by blunting that, by knocking that down, by suppressing it, you may help with some of the some of the reflux symptoms, you know, the decreasing the acid you know, a level of the pH of the fluid that gets up into the esophagus, but you're not actually treating the problem. And so a lot of people with, with reflux will have chest pain, they'll have dental erosions, chronic cough, laryngitis, asthma, voice changes. These are things that happen. These medications that they're on, particularly the proton pump inhibitors, because they cause such a drastic reduction in their acid, people then develop things like B12 deficiencies, say issues with calcium and iron and magnesium, vitamin C. Uh, they're more, more likely to develop things like pneumonia, dementia, chronic diarrhea, diarrhea, chronic kidney disease, bone loss, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is also associated with uh, this. So this clearly is not the best thing you can do. The, the next disorder, which some people have heard of, is called celiac disease. And so celiac disease is thought to be relatively uncommon. People with this will have, again, severe symptoms of abdominal pain, osteopenia, anemia, gas, bloating, alopecia, loss of their hair, nausea, vomiting, joint pain, bone pain, fatigue, depression, anxiety, <laughs> headaches, balance problems, infertility, menstrual cycle irregularities. These are all real problems and these are associated when individuals are exposed to gluten or things like gliadin, which is you know one of the more specific proteins that are found uh, in that. But while gluten is most commonly found in ingredients like wheat and rye and barley, it can also be found in oats. Any manufactured product that has a high lack likelihood of cross-contamination with gluten uh, flour. So there's a lot of problems with this. The final one is Crohn's disease. Now I just saw a guy in consult uh, yesterday. Crohn's disease had had you know let it go for 10 years, had been on numerous medications, and you know it was just 
told it, hey, the medications are no longer working for you, and we're going to probably have to uh, resect some of your colon or some of your intestine, which is tragic. I think these things could be avoided. Now, hopefully, by going on a elimination diet, he'll be able to maybe maybe salvage that so he doesn't need to go on to have that, that colon resection. We'll see what happens with him. Had they intervened with diet maybe years earlier, perhaps all this could have been avoided. Good thing is I see a lot of wins here, particularly with some of these, all these conditions, quite honestly, but these autoimmune diseases, which can be particularly debilitating and, and tragic, we've been able to see people actually resolve these autoimmune diseases by going on uh, low-carb elimination diets, meat-based diets, carnivore diets. And so these things um, have tremendous potential for efficacy for this. You know, we look at some of the, you know, different uh, uh, studies that are out there. You know, we see that uh, GERD patients, for instance, see a drastic reduction of symptoms when they go on a low-carb diet. IBS patients often see near complete uh, uh, remission of their symptoms uh, by going on, you know, things like carnivore diets. You know, there was a trial out there where they looked at egg yolks to treat celiac disease. They pointed at the notion that eggs and their animal-based proteins, fats and nutrients support the healing of the gut. There was a 2016 case report looking at Crohn's disease where a 14-year-old boy was given the standard prescription of steroids as well, five, as well as five cycles of this biologic therapy and a diet low in fat and fiber and lactose-free. As time progressed, so did the disease. Finally, patients started on a animal fat-based ketogenic diet, including meat, offal, and eggs. And during the next 15 months, the patient reversed all of his symptoms and is sustaining complete remission on a meat-based high-fat diet. And so uh, this research seems to suggest that eating a low-carbohydrate diet, high in fat, you know, high in meat-based uh, proteins can be very uh, anti-inflammatory and can contribute to healing and possibly even reversing uh, all of these symptoms. And so step one in this process is remove processed food from your diet. Get rid of the seed oils, the starches, the sugars from your diet. That should be the first thing you do. And then consider adding in animal products. You know, this is, again, these conditions are 100% treatable with nutrition. And, and the people that tell you it has nothing to do with nutrition are basically clueless. If you go to a gastroenterologist for this and you ask about diet and he says there's, there's no evidence or that nutrition has nothing to do with that, go find a different doctor, guys. I'm telling you, I've seen it over and over again. All right, guys, hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you're suffering from these conditions, um, let me know in the comments. If you've suffered from these conditions and had you know, significant improvement by including a meat-based diet, let me know in the comments. All right, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We will see you on the next video. Take care, guys.